What happens when someone tries to revise the history of your people? This is something that Ashkenazi Jews face due to a false but oft-repeated academic theory about their ancestral origin. What is this debunked origin story? Why are some people sharing it? And what does it say about Ashkenazi Jews and, more importantly, those who are spreading disinformation about them? First, some necessary background info. The two largest communities or denominations within Judaism are Sephardim and Ashkenazim. Today's Sephardim, or Sephardic Jews, are the descendants of the Jews who arrived on the Iberian Peninsula after the Babylonian and Roman exiles, before fleeing to Southern Europe, the Balkans, and North Africa after the Alhambra Decree, a record that is not contested. Ashkenazim, or Ashkenazi Jews, are those whose ancestors arrived in the Danube Valley and Rhineland areas after the Roman exile, with some accounts dating as far back as 321 CE, but there are some who call these historical events into question. A hypothesis dating back to the late 1800s states that Ashkenazi Jews are all descendants of the Khazars. In the 600s CE, in southeast Russia, a multi-ethnic conglomerate of Turkic people founded a powerful state made up of people from many different ethnicities. This was the Kingdom of Khazaria. The theory goes that in the 8th century, the Khazar ruling class converted en masse to Judaism on the instruction of their ruler. According to this line of reasoning, these Jews didn't migrate from Jerusalem and Babylonia into France and Germany, but rather migrated from modern Russia and Ukraine. The lack of proof for the theory hasn't prevented it from catching on with a number of geneticists, historians, linguists, and laypeople. It even has support from academics at universities in Tel Aviv and Sheffield, England. The problem is that the Kingdom of Khazaria was destroyed sometime in the late first millennium, and the next time we have records of Jews in that area, today's Western Ukraine and Belarus, is over 400 years later. Additionally, DNA tests have shown a close relationship between Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews, as well as a connection to other Middle Eastern people, but no connection between Ashkenazi Jews and the Khazars. The Khazar theory is also dead on arrival from a linguistic perspective. The main language of the Ashkenazi Jews, Yiddish, shows no trace of Turkic origin. Yiddish is considered a Germanic language, with Hebrew and Aramaic words thrown in. As the Yiddish linguist and author Alexander Beter puts it, the personal names and surnames borne by Jews in Eastern Europe during the last six centuries, as well as the Yiddish language as a whole, do not contain any link to Khazari. So, who's pushing this theory? Well, certain academics, for one. Their hypothesis got a big bump in 1976 when a writer and amateur anthropologist named Arthur Kessler published the now-debunked book, The Thirteenth Tribe. Kessler thought that by proving Ashkenazi Jews were actually more European than Semitic, it would upend the foundations of European anti-Semitism. Ironically, Kessler's claims only serve to feed anti-Semitism by accidentally resurrecting a theory that would only go on to serve the interests of bigots and the uninformed. After its publication, supporters expounded upon his claims even further, while detractors called it anti-Semitic. But why would the hypothesis be anti-Semitic instead of just another scholarly theory? It makes more sense when you look at some of the recent supporters of the theory, especially those outside of academia. These include online commenters, who use it to delegitimize the Jewish people by classifying them as a fake nation, and even political leaders like the Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas. In a 2018 speech delivered to the Palestinian Liberation Organization's legislative body, Abbas quoted Kessler and his theory that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from the Khazars, not the biblical Israelites. The allure of the hypothesis to someone like Abbas is clear. It delegitimizes Jewish claims on the land of Israel. If Ashkenazim came from what's now Russia, then the resurgence of an ancestral nationhood in the ancient land of Israel are easily dismissed. Too bad for Abbas that the science is not on his side, and that the genetic findings of Ashkenazi Jews point to people of Middle Eastern origin, not Turkic or Russian. It's also worth stating that the theory, and the subsequent not-your-land accusations thrown at Jews, completely discounts Sephardi and other Jewish communities, and makes it seem as if Ashkenazim and Ashkenazim alone are the only Jews, which is of course preposterous. It's not a stretch to say that throughout the centuries, anti-Semitic, xenophobic, and racist tropes have followed a similar path. Unfounded ideas that gain a foothold because they serve the interests of anti-religious bigotry, claims of genetic superiority, and political ostracism. It's always fun to learn about conspiracy theories. Sure, everyone loves believing that Tupac is still alive, that there was a second shooter on the grassy knoll, or that the moon landing was nothing but a Stanley Kubrick short film. But let's remember that they are just that, conspiracy theories. They're an entertaining showcase of the human imagination, but to take them seriously without doing some research, not a good look. Ashkenazi Jews are definitely Jews, despite any debunked hypotheses that claim otherwise. In a world with limitless information at our fingertips, it's our responsibility to be informed consumers and to make an effort to sort out fact from fiction. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing. And if there's something you want to see us tackle in an upcoming video, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Shalom. Call her Lord Yahweh by Shem Awashai by Shem Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners, and to the Aquath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm. 
from the branch of the Great Millstone coming at you with another lesson in truth. And this is a response to uh, dismantling and debunking of truth about Ashkenazi Jews unpacked. Uh, and the name of the video is, uh, you all just says in the title, fake Jews with a question mark. And the uh, truth of the matter is, yes, indeed they are. I want to read a couple scriptures. All right. And the first scripture being um, uh, Ezekiel 36 and I believe it's 36 and 5. And it reads, therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, the Edomites. All right. The Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edomites which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with, despite, uh, with despiteful minds to cast it out, the Israelites, for a prey. All right. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills and the rivers and the valleys, thus you have to have power. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, but... Have be, uh, but ye have become ashamed uh, 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 of the heathen. So, literally, the Israel, the 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 land of Israel was appointed into the hands of his enemies, as the as his heritage was appointed into the hands of his enemies once before in the past. So, um, and that would be, that was completed by the hat wearing 1948ers who will scream anti sam every time you bring out evidences that prove that they're lies. Anytime you say any, you know, anything that's uh, at this point, uh, anything that goes against what the mainstream uh, is saying, whether it be true or not, it could be considered misinformation or anti sim or, or something else. All right. So uh, I'm going to allow this guy to speak and then just destroy him with truth, with 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 many resources of information plus scripture. That uh, uh that completely solidify that the fact that when people the people that who have who have made these bold statements that the people in the land of Israel are are imposters and that they are indeed fake Jews that it is it, it is indeed a one hundred percent truth. What happens when someone tries to revise the history of your people? This is something that Ashkenazi Jews face due to a false but oft repeated academic theory about their ancestral origin. Okay, so once again. Ashkenazi is a son of Japheth. There is no Ashkenaz son in, in the line of Shem that you can look up for yourself. All right. There is no there is no Ashkenaz in that that is Shemitic. All right. Just know that. All right. Look it up for yourself. Ashkenaz is in the bloodline of, 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 of Japheth. All right. Of their uh, Japhetic people. There is no Ashkenaz in the line of Shem. What is this debunked origin story? Why are some people sharing it? And what does it say about Ashkenazi Jews and, more importantly, those who are spreading disinformation about them? First, some necessary background info. The two largest communities or denominations within Judaism are Sephardim and Ashkenazim. Today's Sephardim, or Sephardic Jews, are the descendants of the Jews who arrived on the Iberian Peninsula after the Babylonian and Roman exiles. Okay. Now that he said that, we're going to go into the book uh, From Babylon to Timbuktu, A History of Ancient Black Races, including the Black Hebrews. All right. And we're going to go, and that's this book right here by Rudolf R. Windsor, scholar, academic scholar. All right. Rudolf R. Windsor. And we're going to read from... Uh, Page, uh, chapter three, we started chapter three, page 26. The Sumerian, Babylonians, and Ethiopians were black people. They contributed much to the advancement of civilization because they studied astrology. They were, uh, they were capable of formulating many principles of astronomy these black people were so sagacious, sagacious and skillful that they were able to divide the years into months, weeks, hours, minutes, and seconds in mathematics. They developed the decimal system. 
the most famous of the Babylonian kings was uh, Hammurabi, who ruled about 2150 BC. He was outstanding for the codification of the system of laws founded on, re on the retaliation as a punitive measure of, uh, for crime. He also established the seven day week and the last day and the rest day of the Sabbath. This idea was adopted by the Hebrews and then transmitted into the Greeks, months, Romans, and, and, and other Europeans. Now I'm going to uh, beg to differ with that portion because it's written even in the Josephus that Abraham brought mathematics and science to these, to the Hamitic people. All right. The literature of the Babylonians is quite interesting. Long ago, these black people wrote, sh wrote with sharp instruments on clay tablets. Thousands of these have been found and some them of, of them disclose a popular work known as the, uh, the Emma Elish, the creation epic. The story of how the world began to rise from the Babylonians after the dispersal of mankind at the Tower of Babel. The black Hamites migrated toward the east, south and southwest these black Hamites settled in the land of Canaan later called Israel the land of Canaan the gets the name from the youngest son Ham who was Canaan all right the Canaanites were prim, uh primordial about uh, aborigines of the land of Canaan Canaan we may Call them Africans because their blood relationship to other inhabitants of African continent. They were eleven. There were eleven Canaanite tribes living in the land of Canaan and surrounding it before the Black Israelites possessed it. The great cultural, commercial cities and uh, of these Black Canaanites were Tyre, Zidon, sometimes written written Zidon. The city gets its name from Sidon. The firstborn son of Canaan, the Sidonians, the Tyrians were the same race. All right. I, I, um, in many history, his history books, you read about the Sidonians under the name Phoenicia. The Greeks called the Sidonians Phoenicians, land of palm, because they found many trees there. But the Sidonians called the nation by the name of Canaan or Canaan of uh, Phoenicia. The land of Sidonia was located north of Palestine along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, bounded by this. Well, you know what? That's enough. All right. Let me just jump down to this one. The black people were proficiently uh, uh, proficient in philosophy, astronomy, geometry, arithmetic, navigation, um, and then it names all these other places, Crete, uh, in the north of Africa, near Tunis, all the way up into Babylon, basically. So what it's showing you uh, uh, is that the people in the so-called Middle East was a dark race of people, and there are plenty of relics and evidences to prove that. All right. Then this guy made the false statement about uh, uh, the people on the Iberian Peninsula. Well, he made this statement, and then he's going to try to use DNA, and, there, and he'll mention that later again. But uh, you have to remember... There were a number of Israeli scientists that uh, couple going back a couple years that even said that that uh, uh, that DNA can be falsified and manipulated. And that's you can look that up for yourself. But here, let's read from this is uh, the book, The Negro Question, The, uh, the Missing Link, uh, The King of the Scots. So we're going to talk about relics and images that were found. All right, and here are the books and the information and the years and the scholars uh, from way before uh, Arthur Kosler, which he's going to say debunked, which it isn't. He just, he said it, but that's not true. Professor Boyd Dawkins, our earliest ancestors bygone days, the lecture delivered in a public hall, Collyhurst, Manchester, uh, on uh, the 1st of January. I'm sorry, on January the 8th, 1879. The ancient Britain Scots are our short black people, pages 103, 107. All right, so you can go and look these sources up. Dern, Dr. Thurman, uh, Nature Journal Science, page 92. From the evidence at hand, it seems that the Iberian black man occupied the whole of Western Europe at one time. Why? Because they dug up and found the body. So just because they, did, they uh, don't want to teach you that in whatever academic 
uh, 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 resources that this guy from Unpack used. Um, well, there you go. Professor Hugley, 1870, Iberian race, praise, uh, 332. That's where the information come, came from, or this information comes from. The Iberian Basque, meaning bodies, black bones have been found all over Europe with animals. All right. So this guy is making statements that are completely fabrications and whitewashed history lies. All right. So we've, we've caught him up pretty. We could actually finish the video right here, but we're going to continue. Before fleeing to Southern Europe, the Balkans and North Africa after the Alhambra decree, a record that is not contested. Ashkenazim or Ashkenazi Jews are those whose ancestors arrived in the Danube Valley and Rhineland areas after the Roman exile. Now remember, Ashkenazi is the son of Japhet. There is not any biblical reference which you can find in the Holy Bible, in the Torah, the Tanakh, that will refer to uh, Israelites or Semitic people as Ashkenaz. Remember that. With some accounts dating as far back as 321 CE, but there are some who call these historical events into question. A hypothesis dating back to the late 1800s states that Ashkenazi Jews are all descendants of the Khazars. In the 600s CE in Southeast Russia, a multi-ethnic conglomerate of Turkic people founded a powerful state made up of people from many different ethnicities. This was the kingdom of Khazaria. The theory- So how did a whole bunch of people of different ethnicities get into Europe and when, did, when and how did that happen? All right, uh, here is a, uh from the page, which would definitely get you deleted by bringing this book out, Esau Edom, okay? And this is uh, from page seven, and we'll just read it. It says, uh, the Edomites were driven into the old territory of Judah. The Maccabean family, a remnant of the true Judites, had ruled Judea from 166 to 37 BC under Judas Maccabees, uh, 1 Maccabees 5 and, and, and 3, recaptured the city of Hebron, from the Edomites in 164 BC, during the time John Hycranus, 135 to 105 BC, the nephew of Judas, the uh, the the uh, of Judas, the Judites were again faced with hostility of Idumeans, the Edomites. Hycranus confronted the Edomites, causing a decisive change in relations between the two factions. John Hycranus conquered the whole of Edom, undertook the forced conversion of its inhabitants to Judaism. That's also written in the Josephus. This forced the Edomites became a section of the Jewish people. That's where you get Judaism Jewish from. All right. They, they actually converted way back then. And then they turned around and converted again in the uh, during the Dark Ages. This is uh, thus the, in, the in juncture in time, the Edomites. And I'm going to read that first Maccabees 15 and 33. Uh, thus the injuncture of time, the Edomites were then incorporated with the Jewish nation and that country was called by the Greeks, the Roman Idumia. All right. So, and so let's grab that first Maccabees, uh, 15 and three. Okay. Let's read that. First Maccabees 1533, Salakia. And it reads, Then answered Simon and said unto him, We have taken other men's land, nor holding which that which appertaineth to others, but the inheritance of our fathers, which our enemies had wrongfully in their possession a certain time. So this still this same group of humanity is still running around to this very day. Referring to themselves as Jews. Now to go back to the to the the, the fervent crest, the whole area of uh, uh, the the so-called Middle East was a part of the land uh, of Canaan's land. But they took it from the from the Canaanite tribes, which there was eleven African dark African tribes in the land of Canaan, which spans from the whole everything north of 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 uh, of, uh, of Africa, including the land of Israel, all the way up into. Uh, what Babylon Babylon was, which Iraq today was all considered a part of Ham's land, is where the Canaanites were. So this is from, and this is what the group of scholars from the Young's Bible Dictionary says about Ham. Let's read about these these Hamites, okay? And the definition is split between pages two fifty five and two fifty six. So it reads. Let's see if it'll focus. It 
There we go. Ham, a son of Noah, Cush, and Egypt, put and Canaan. See further on each of these. While they all may have been dark skinned, they were not. Forefathers of the Negroid, the Israelites, all 12 tribes, racist, but rather the peoples associated with Egypt, north of the continent of Africa, the Egyptians thought of Canaan as their province, even into the very late times. There, so there it is. So everything that was north of uh, North Africa, the land of Israel, the fervent crest, the land of Canaan, where the Philistines, where they were constantly battling with the, uh, trying to get that to focus again. Come on now. Um, those were so-called black people. So just like here, this is another uh, attempt to to uh, whitewash history because the truth of the matter is during the Dark Ages, almost the whole outside of this Turkic people that was in Khazaria, uh, the majority of Europe was the rule was being Europe was being ruled by so-called black people. All right. Now to solidify evidences. Right, because once this guy's going to try to use pseudoscience, we already told you how they can fabricate DNA and how, and how they, it was admitted by a bunch of Jewish uh, uh, or Israeli scientists that DNA indeed can and has been fabricated. Uh, this is page nine of the Roman Empire of the Edomite. All right, because the people in the in the land of Israel, uh, according to scripture and and and, and prophecy. They're actually Amalek, all right? They're, the, they're Edomites, all right? This says, this grand seeker was certainly discovered and disclosed more than 12,000 years ago that the answer to the question, whence came the Romans, may have returned even registered in writing before the birth of Hamashiach. The response proceeded neither from the Greek nor from, from Roman, but from the, from the despised Jew, that it has been preserved to the Jewish Targums that exists amidst the fables and impedities and absurdities and blasphemies of the Jewish Talmud, and that it may comprehend 20 words. The, uh, the Romans came from Esau, who is Edom. The, the Italy is Idumia, Rome, Basra of the Hebrew prophets. And Basra, which is which any city, any place where, it, where, uh, uh, where, the, where the Edomites are, is going to be visited by who the Lord ignorantly calls uh, Jesus Christ in, in Isaiah uh, 63 upon his return is promised that he's coming back to destroy Basra. Okay. So once again, we, we got evidences and prophecies. All right. Uh, uh, Zechariah nine and six said that a bastard, which is a fake falling fraudulent, uh, people would dwell in Ashdod. All right. Ashdod is, is, is a port city, uh, Tel Aviv, uh, modern day. Okay. So this guy, uh, is a liar. Okay. And it's just as simple as that. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekak, Wadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers. You know, and uh, brothers should do responses and, and, you know, on this video and just annihilate this guy for even opening his mouth. So just like vocab alone, man, you know, it's just, you either might just need to be quiet. Because every time you open your mouth, you just give us more ev evidence to... To shame you and, and 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 you know and show you that you're a liar, that you've lied. Shalom, wa ba ba ba.